So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the Holy Roman Empire comes back to the modern day. Now the HRE was a very interesting thing. Um, honestly, I don't know too much about it. I mean, I know the basics about it, but like how many things it's made up of. It's made up of like hundreds of different principalities and I guess counties and countries. It's a big old mess. And honestly, I should probably touch up on it. But we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where it comes back to the modern day. And those principalities and stuff, they don't really matter because this is going to be formed as one ginormous country. So this is like big Germany. And this is what the HRE looked like at its max territorial reach. And as you can see, it takes a lot of land from a lot of different countries, uh, most notably France and Italy, but also Poland, uh, Croatia, the Netherlands got completely annexed along with Bel or not Belgium, Luxembourg, but Belgium also is barely holding on. And yeah, so this is going to make for an interesting war scenario. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it, show some support. You can subscribe if you're new, leave a comment with some video ideas, um, anything like that, like that. This was actually a video idea that I saw from multiple people in the comments. So like, you know, you repeatedly promoting what you want to see, it does eventually get to me. I just got to see it consistently. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get to this war stuff. All right, so the HRE pops back up in Europe. Um, we have to go ahead and disband NATO and the EU because that would immediately get them into a war. And we don't really want them going to war with the United States. Um, that would not end up so well for the hre but they do have a lot of small targets around them should they want to expand now we're going to assume that they do want to expand and that this is like ruled by a bunch of medieval kings or something uh with the modern day technology so they're looking to expand they're expansionist and once again nato is no longer existing so they can't do anything to stop the hre uh the first event we do have happening though before any wars break out is a unification and that's between belgium and france so basically france just annexes belgium um that's like the that's like the french part of belgium so it doesn't even matter but that's obviously what they need to do because if not well I guess the hre will go ahead and do it for them anyway hre they're gonna go north and they're gonna go after denmark now, the reason for going after Denmark here, um, well, one, because they have German land. So, I mean, technically it wasn't their lands to begin with, but right here is owned by uh, present day Germany, but also because they would get a lot more coastline. They would then share a border with Sweden and uh, they would control the entrance into the Baltic Sea. So that could be very useful for them. So they send their tanks and all their new fancy smanshy guns and stuff. All of that is going north into Denmark and they invade them in guess how many hours? Six. So Denmark is folded over and the HRE was going to go ahead and annex them. All right, so Denmark has been fully annexed. Um, I guess what we can do is we can do like principalities and stuff. Look at the counties. So I guess in this scenario, there would be like, the, I, I know this has a name that I should know, but I forgot what it is. Uh, we have that area. Then we have, I guess, Daneland or Denmark, uh, Copenhagen, and then whatever these two islands are called. That could be like your county map or something. I don't really know. Oh, and also I can't forget this island over here. So there's that. So HRE has now established itself as a hostile-ish kind of country in Europe. So who is scared of them and who maybe wants to be allies with them? Well, for one, France wants to be allies with them. There's no point in going against them. You would probably lose. And they also didn't take too much of France's land. I mean, they, they took a lot, but on it's not horrible so if we like do a very rough draft of what france's border used to be like like they they took a lot but like you can live without this and of course then you had switzerland and all its glory and then you had the rest of italy and then you know austria went over here and then there's slovenia down there very rough i might as well finish the map so there was poland right here and then there was also Czech, yeah, let me fix that. Totally forgot about the Czech Republic over here. That's not what it looks like, but just bear with me. You know, this is why I can't be a cartographist. This is not acceptable, but basically this is what it looked like before. This was France's land. So, I mean, Italy got the most land taken from them. France is, I guess, second, but they're chill with it. Once again, they're, they're it's okay, that's fine. So France wants to be the HRE's ally and the HRE is okay with that. You know who doesn't want to be the HRE's ally? Well, you know, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Italy, Britain, Kaliningrad. Yeah, you, Eastern Europe doesn't really like the HRE too much. The Byzantines could be allies though. So with its newfound ally, uh, the HRE in France have sort of a monopoly over Europe. No one's gonna challenge them. I mean, the HRE is strong as hell because first of all, they have Germany, they have a portion of Poland, they have a portion of France, and they have a portion of Italy. That's already some of the most powerful countries in Europe. And then you combine regular France with that and you're probably the strongest country here. I mean, Russia would have something to say about that, but that's Russia. I mean, they're barely European, right? They're just kind of, they're just Russians they're their own continent i'm sure they wouldn't mind that either anyway uh th they're gonna go out there poland now it's just poland i'm sorry you guys can never catch a break i did the uh the one video where it was like what if poland finally snapped that was a good one you guys like that one 
And then I did it with Ukraine, and you guys didn't like that one. So I guess Poland is the only one that can do it. Understandably so, though. I mean, I think Poland's been screwed over more than Ukraine, barely. But we do have Poland getting fully indexed by the HRE. We can go ahead and take a look at this peace treaty. And it looks oh so familiar. Um, Originally, I did have it as the, like, the World War II Germany's borders, but that's too cliche, right? I mean, we had to have them with the whole indexed Poland, so it's still World War II Germany. Just this time, it's like what they annexed after they invaded Poland. I mean, this would then be a puppet state, but that didn't happen here. And well, Poland is in shambles. I'm pretty sure Warsaw is maybe in that. It's not, it's like right there. So they either do or don't have their capital city, but either way, they're not doing too good. We'll see how Poland spans out uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, it's time for some conquesting. Specifically, the HRE is gonna go after Croatia in order to get itself a foothold in the Balkans. Now the issue with this is that it's the Balkans and you can't really go in there without stirring up some kind of conflict. So as the HRE is going into Croatia, we have the Hungarians joining the war and starting their own invasion of Croatia because why not? And the two sides eventually meet up and uh, the HRE goes ahead and takes the rest of the coast, but they are now forced to work out a treaty between each other. And when the HRE was a thing, which was like the 1200s, I think 1100s or 13, no. 1200s yeah 1200s when they were a thing back then uh hungary was as well it was its own thing and it was pretty big and they also owned this piece of croatia at the time i think i really need to touch up on my history i don't know what's going on see the issue is in school right now i'm taking government not history so that's why and i haven't taken a world history course in like two years but that's just the curriculum that's how we're taught don't worry i'm going to college soon so i'm sure i'll get another class on that anyway uh hungary takes over the panhandle ish area and then uh the hre takes over the other panhandle but the hre is not done here as they're going to continue to go after balkan countries this time bosnia and herzegovina and as we all know bosnia and herzegovina is a tipping ticking time bomb tipping time bomb what was i about to say you can't have one country going in there without three others joining and you also can't invade bosnia without a civil war breaking out we're going to be ignoring the civil war aspect in this video and we're gonna go ahead and pan out what the annexation will look like so basically the hre does something like this the hungarians do something like this and then we have the serbs taking this now this won't be the final border but it will be pretty similar so let's go ahead and take a look at the trifecta balkan treaty the partitioning of bosnia and the execution of bosnia herzegovina as an idea that was brutal for no reason i'm sorry bosnians and herzegovinians and Everyone lived. I mean, everyone lives here, so I'm sorry, everyone. All right, so this is what our borders are going to look like. As you can see, the HRE got a majority of it, but Serbia also got themselves a good portion, so maybe they split with the uh, majority. And then we actually have uh, Hungary getting a good piece as well. So now this is going to kind of bring a chain reaction into the Balkans. Uh, Serbia and Montenegro are going to go ahead and unite together in order to counter any possible HRE expansion. And they're also going to ally with Serbia. So a Balkan alliance is created. Uh, Hungary joins it. Serbia joins it as well as Bulgaria and Slovakia. So we kind of have this Balkan coalition going on here. And to signify that, this is probably a new thing that I'm going to start doing. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and dot these countries. This is probably something that I'm gonna completely forget later on. But for now, this is a thing. You can also go ahead and mark the HRE's alliance, so France and the HRE. And speaking of the HRE alliance, we actually have Sweden joining this alliance. Now that's a weird combo, but we gotta remember that H the HRE just one upped and completely dismantled Denmark and Sweden, as we know, does not like Denmark or did not like Denmark. So Sweden's gonna join their alliance because you know what? You took care of the Danes so we're friends now we have a common enemy the danes and you got rid of my common enemy the danes and the danes no longer exist so we're friends now someone's got to make an adis pro out of context compilation and send it to me because i've said some crazy stuff some crazy out of context stuff anyway as we can see europe is starting to pick its sides we either have the hre aligned or the non-hre aligned or the neutrals norway is neutral and so is finland ukraine probably doesn't care because russia is doing russian things theoretically but now france wants to get in on some of this expansion so the hre is going to go ahead and send some of its troops over to the spanish border that's a lot of hre troops Spain takes note of this and uh, well, they're about to be taking a lot more notes. So the French and the HRE people, Holy Roman, Holy Roman Empire, Empyreans, the HRE people. Yeah, they're going to start to invade Spain. They take over all of Catalonia and they start to push in towards Madrid. But this is a prime time to go ahead and launch sneak attack against the HRE. And that's exactly what Italy is going to do. Now, Italy got absolutely dismantled. Well, not dismantled. They didn't get absolutely dismantled. They just lost half of their country, which is basically getting dismantled. But they got 
hurt. Uh, they lost Rome, and well, they're gonna go ahead and try to crusade and take it back, and this goes extremely well at first. Beatrice has to pull some troops out of France, which leads to this temporary stalemate over here with Spain. There's some equal land exchanges going on on each side. Um, Barcelona gets recaptured, but the HRE does manage to push back against Italy, although it is kind of slower than what people expected. And uh, you wonder why that it might be looking like that, but it turns out there's some British folks down here in Italy. Looks like the Brits can't stay out the damn wars in Europe. I don't know what part of England that accent is from, so English people let me know. It's some sort of English accent. It's probably like the equivalent of like the American Southern accent where it's like, hey y'all, I'm not doing any more accents. I'm sorry guys. So Britain joins the war on the side of the blue team. And uh, basically we have ourselves a little World War III going on, except it's only in Europe. So with this in mind, we have the HRE Alliance going ahead and bringing Sweden into the war. And this officially makes it a continental war. So why not add in some more people? Uh, the coalition down here, they're gonna mind their business for now, but Poland will join this war in hopes of getting their land back. And we have a 3v4, which is not fair, but it's the HRE, so who cares? The Brits are gonna go ahead and engage in a naval battle with the French in which they're going to win and eventually make a landing over here in the Normandy area of France. French are getting flashbacks and uh, they're also losing ground in Spain. So the HRE is gonna go ahead and pull some strings and get themselves a new ally, this time being Portugal. Portugal. How is this possible? Portugal is allied to Britain. Does that would never happen, right? Well, well, well. Looks like the HRE's got some uh, some strings pulled in the Portuguese government. Some people woke up with bullets in their head one day, and uh, yeah, there's this pro HRE mob that's now in charge. It's maybe has something to do with the lead disease, the lead in the head disease. I like that. I'm gonna start using that in videos. Anyway, Portugal's gonna start doing stuff. Um, I don't really know how much they could do against Spain, but it's enough because France is able to remobilize and repush into Spain, taking back Barcelona. And with the help of some Catalonian natives, they're gonna go ahead and take these three islands, which I can never remember the name of. All right, back over here in Italy, the HRE is doing HRE things and completely wiping out things. They managed to get themselves over here to Corsica and take out Sardinia. And now they start to move south into the Italian peninsula. Up north, Poland did join the war and uh, they're doing stuff, but not much. It's mostly some open rebellions that are happening and taking place in Poland, which kind of connect up with each other and then with the main Polish government. So it looks like a lot more than what's actually happening. It only takes a few HRE battalions to come rolling through here to completely just destroy Poland's hopes and dreams. And uh, well, they start breaking more than just those hopes and dreams. They start breaking Poland itself. And uh, yeah, uh, can we look up how many times that I've had Poland just get annihilated in my videos? I mean, let's think about this for a second here. Which country have I cucked the hardest? Like which one have I just completely like screw you to the most? It's gotta be Poland. Maybe, mm, could be North Korea. Could be one of the Balkan countries. Definitely not America. Pakistan's probably up there. I, I don't know why. I just, yeah, it just happens a lot. I'm sorry, Pakistan. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if someone wants to research that, good luck. So Poland's gone and Italy is starting to fold. And it looks like the blue team's whole idea of, you know, winning the war is going out the window. Italy eventually completely falls. Britain does expand their front in France, but it doesn't look too good. As the HR tr HRE troops, which were fighting in Poland and Italy, are now mobilizing over towards France in order to, you know, win a war. Back down here in Iberia, we do have the Spaniards pushing back the Portuguese. This is no big surprise though. But the French and the HRE people do manage to meet Madrid. And at this point, Spain breaks out to a civil war with multiple groups breaking away. The government loses all of its credibility, cre credibility and uh, Portugal starts pushing in and that's the final straw. So Spain surrenders over. And now it's basically Europe versus Britain. No big surprise. Why well, might that go too well? Thank you, Australia, for that line. And now we're gonna put into Britain, no put into London. Thank you, Baltimore, for that accent. All right, so things aren't going so well for Britain here. Um, they lost their capital. I mean, of course, they're gonna take it back because the land invasion of Britain is insane, right? But like, there's a, eventually a landing over here in Cornwall and then you just gotta have to surrender. I mean, they don't surrender. They just opt to leave the war and they agree to terms of surrender, agree, yeah, peace. Let's just go ahead and figure this thing out, guys. So they all sit at a round table in Berlin. Sounds very medieval-y, so that's probably what's happening. And they're gonna figure this thing out. All right, so looking at this peace treaty here, we can see that the, uh, well, the red team won. That's no big surprise, but a lot of countries got just decimated. 
So Spain looks like they didn't use, they don't look, look like they're that good. They don't look like they're in the best of situations. So there's new countries. There's a couple, there's like four. Um, one of them joined the uh, the, the Holy Roman Empire pact. Uh, that would be Catalonia. Portugal got some land going up to Britain here. We had Ireland get to Northern Ireland. That was really the only loss the British had. Um, uh, maybe the Gibraltar. The HRE took out Italy. I don't even know what this is anymore. This probably isn't Italy. This is like just called boot or something. But uh, they got their hands on Sardinia, on Sicily, and on these three islands, as well as Malta. Might have just secretly taken that. Oh, and Poland doesn't exist anymore. So that's the thing. And uh, yeah, well, there's really only one more thing to do. And that, of course, is the Balkan War. You all saw this one happening. And well, let me just tell you, it's not going to go well for the Balkans because there's a lot of countries here who are friendly with the HRE, most notably... The Byzantines, aka the Romans. I don't actually think they were friendly with the Romans. Technically it would be the Turks, but it doesn't matter. This is my world. So yeah, it turns out having a coalition against the HRE may not be your best move, especially when you have a lot of a lot of ops over here in the Balkans. So uh, to put it short, it doesn't end well for them. It just doesn't. We could take a look at a peace treaty, but I don't want to get people mad at me. So we're just going to pretend that whole Balkan War thing never happened. Um, not a thing. And uh, yeah, so let's just pretend that alliance never existed either. No more angry Balkan people in the comments. Yep, there we go. All right. The one thing that could probably stem from this whole war shenanigan deal thingy me jiggy, whatever y'all want to call it, is a whole bunch of diversification upon European powers. So obviously the HRE Pact is the strongest, but we would have to have something to counter that so in this case britain is gonna go ahead and found the european anti-imperialist league it's a hell of a name there but spain's gonna join it as well as hey look those balkan countries ukraine will join it for obvious reasons lithuania will join as well as kaliningrad and well the hre is gonna go ahead and put the middle finger up to them and draft some more allies so this is gonna be ireland this is gonna be portugal and this is gonna be greece yikes the Macedonians are going to go ahead and be forced to join in on the blue team because for obvious reasons. And uh, that doesn't really set well with Bulgaria, but they're not going to do anything about it. And then there's another league that's found, and this one is the European Neutralism League. Great name, guys. Iceland, Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Romania, Moldova, Albania, Kosovo, if you consider it a country. Italy, surprisingly enough. And uh, what are these new Spanish countries? No, this one. Yeah. They're not doing anything. They're like basically just like the UN of Europe. They say, hey, don't do that. Ah, ah, ah. Don't do that. Oh, you did it anyway. Oh, no. Uh, anyway. All right. So that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I do try to put a fun aspect on these videos. As you can tell, there's three different types of Aegis Pro moods slash what's the word I'm looking for? Setting? No. Theme? A little closer, maybe. There's the energetic kind of stupid one. Um, tries to make video scenarios funny. That was what you just got here. There's the, uh, I don't want to record right now, but I kind of have to one. That happens a lot, especially recently. And then there's the normal, oh, hey, we're doing a video. and I'm ready to do this video. That's the normal motivated me. Haven't seen him in a while. It's mostly just been the other one, the, the sad, depressing guy. Yep, sorry about that. But hey, I got all my schoolwork done. I got a four-day weekend ahead of me. I'm ready to do nothing. And I'm ready to record this video. This was fun. This felt like the old times when my old videos really recently the videos haven't felt like me and i don't know why maybe because i'm running out of ideas but this wasn't a popular idea between you guys and uh, i'm excited to do it so also i want to give a quick shout out to the channel members um i am not going to be able to update it tonight so i do apologize for the new guys but i will try my best to remember to get it updated for the next video so instead of you know editing it in tonight i'm just going to go ahead and say your names so um new super fans thank you so much it looks like we got here uh friaza hope i said that right and uh something that looks like it's in hebrew i'm not sure of what the i think it's hebrew not 100 percent sure but your channel banner says it's check fadida um please let me know in the members discord server how you want me to pronounce your name or in the comment if i see it probably won't see in the comments so just go ahead and say it in the, in the discord server um but i will get those new channel members added asap and there was another thing that i wanted to say oh alternate future series so about that i don't know if i want to resume it and that's because i just i'm having issues with the consistency with it and coming up with new ideas for the scenario which is one you know that's part of the reason that i like the series so much but i did try to like turn the series into kind of this lore based thing and that worked pretty well with the whole trailer and everything but I'm just trying to figure out how I want to mend that into a possible season three. And I have an idea in my head, 
but I'm just not sure if I want to implement that. And you know, it's like what we're eight episodes in or something. So that's about the time that the lore needs to start being thrown in and stuff. Um, and of course it would be like a 20 episode series if I do complete it. But yeah, right now I just need to do like some brainstorming on that. Um, if I do return it, uh, then I want it. I want to make sure that it's actually doing good as a series because the whole reason I pause it was because it just wasn't pulling numbers and I wanted to see. And um, you know, that's unfortunate because on YouTube you're supposed to do what you want, do whatever you want, make sure your audience is happy. I know you guys like the alternate feature series. But we also do have to remember that, you know, maintaining numbers is an aspect of doing YouTube, especially when it's your only source of income and stuff like that. So it just really wasn't pulling the numbers that I wanted to see. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. Um, but if I do bring it back and the numbers are better, then I'll continue it. But uh, in terms of like consistency, it wasn't doing too great. So I, I think you guys understand that. Um, maybe you don't, maybe you do. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. So if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. All that great stuff. Super duper cool. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yem Yem, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad 45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.